The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone here at 5 a.m. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. It's not a list anyone wants to be on, but Kern County is landing at the top. The annual state of the air report from the American Lung Association has been released and findings show nine out of 10 Californians live in polluted air. 17's Tali Anderson has details on our ranking and what we can do to help everyone breathe a little easier. So let's talk about this report. Um, we are happy that it brings up air quality um, this time every year. Very important to talk about and know where the pollution in, in your area comes from. But in this report, we are always get failing grades. And you know what? Those failing grades don't show you the progress that we've been making year over year. The American Lung Association tracks air pollution in U.S. cities. This year's findings show 12 California cities as the most polluted in the nation. Bakersfield ranks number one, the absolute worst, as most polluted city in America in terms of unhealthy days of particle pollution, beating out Fresno for the number one spot. We are surrounded by mountains and we often have a meteorological lid, if you will, sort of an invisible lid holding down any pollution we create in the valley. Um, Bakersfield being sort of at the bottom of the corner of the valley, it the pollution tends to collect. What you really should be aware of is the influence of wildfires in particulate matter. Definitely on the 4th of July, but anytime we have a wildfire impacting the valley, it's the PM 2.5 that we spend all winter talking about. Uh, when you inhale that, you're breathing in fine particles, microscopic particles that travel through your lungs into your bloodstream and impact your health negatively. Um, what are some ways that Golden Empire residents can improve and not be on top of this list? Think about your daily activities. On a daily basis, you probably pop open your cell phone and check the weather. Make air quality part of that daily routine. The next time you have a bunch of errands to run, make sure you take all of those trips in one setting. They call that trip linking. That reduces the miles you would have traveled on the road out to each of those places and then back home again. The American Lung Association also pushes for California toward zero emission technologies and healthier transportation to help clear the air. And they are even calling on President Biden to urgently move forward on several measures to clean up air pollution nationwide. But here locally, if you want to find ways to help, Valier.org is what I probably would push because we've got grants for every concept you can think of. Reporting for 17 News, I'm Tolly Anderson. In your 17 Court Watch, a woman who was driving drunk when she hit and killed a teenage girl fought through tears as she apologized to the girl's family and begged for forgiveness. Back in 2019, Heidi Jeremiah was driving on Highway 155 when she hit Cassidy Phillips, killing her. It was Phillips' 17th birthday. Police say Jeremiah's blood alcohol content was more than twice the legal limit that night. The final chapter of this tragic case played out in a Kern County courtroom yesterday as a judge sentenced Jeremiah to four years in prison. Jeremiah told the family she wants to live every day in Cassidy's honor and hopes they can forgive her. But a friend of the Phillips family told the court four years was not enough, calling the sentence a failure of the system. things that we need to remember when we vote, that these are elected officials. Uh, the DA's position as well as the judge, they are elected officials and these laws need to be changed so that um, when you kill somebody in a drunk driving accident, it's considered a violent crime. And the family was really hoping that the judge would see, see things differently. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Jeremiah will also have to pay restitution to the Phillips family. That amount has yet to be determined. In your 17 court watch this morning, a Mexican citizen living in Bakersfield is going to spend time behind bars for organizing a cockfighting ring. 
A search found Horacio Ortega Martinez had 250 fighting roosters with razor blades attached to their legs. Law enforcement says they first learned of the cockfighting ring last year and they wiretapped a phone getting evidence for a search warrant. Ortega Martinez was sentenced to 18 months in prison. The man accused of killing two men in Bakersfield last week was a Mexican Mafia member who was released from prison just a week before that deadly shooting. That is according to court documents obtained by 17 News. Deputies say Brian Castellon shot and killed two men last Wednesday on South Union Avenue. Castellon allegedly ran from the scene and then broke into a home a couple blocks down the road. Prosecutors say he tried to steal the homeowner's car at gunpoint. He was not able to drive it. Castellon is facing several charges, including two counts of murder. Speeding appears to be the cause of a deadly head-on crash in southwest Bakersfield last night. It happened just before 6 p.m. on Campus Park Drive. You can see the smoke flaring out of that blue car there. Police say at one point that car veered into the wrong side of the road and into oncoming traffic where it collided head on with a silver vehicle, killing the driver. The driver and passenger of the blue car were taken to the hospital. Injuries are described as moderate. Investigators say speeding is believed to be a factor in this crash. Catalytic converter thefts continue to plague California drivers and account for more than 30% of insurance claims. Assemblymember Jasmine Bain's proposal, called AB 1519, makes it illegal to remove a VIN marking on a catalytic converter. Baines, who represents Kern County, announced yesterday that the Transportation Committee passed the bill and it heads to Public Safety Committee next. If approved, the bill will advance to the Appropriations Committee before receiving a full vote on the Assembly floor in mid-May. PG&E is taking action at substations near the Tulare Lake Bed, which are flood watch from, on flood watch from the melting snowpack. Flood protection walls will be built around the substations. The most threatened is the Angelia substation. The plan here is to build a 16 foot tall flood wall with Tulare Lake flood water creeping closer and closer every day. Where it's at right now, it's just a couple hundred yards from the edge of the of the Tulare Lake. We've seen forecasts that call for um, eight to 10 feet of water out there up to up to 13 or 14. pg &E already disconnected 26 impacted customers with many more to come as the lake continues to rise. And we are told it won't impact life in the short term, but putting the pieces back together. New details on a shooting in East Bakersfield. Investigators say it started as a domestic dispute. It happened on Kentucky Street Monday night. Deputies were called to the area and they heard a gunshot from inside the bedroom. A short time later, they heard a second gunshot in that same room. When they forced their way in, they found a woman and a man, both who had been shot. The man's wounds were allegedly self-inflicted. He's since been arrested for attempted murder. Both, however, are still in the hospital in critical condition. Stunning testimony in the high-profile murder trial of the couple accused of murdering their missing adopted children. Jurors yesterday were shown surveillance video of Jacqueline and Trezell West two days before Orrin and Orson West were reported missing. The video shows the adoptive parents dropping off four of their six children. The West said they kept Orrin and Orson in their car. The parents say they stopped at several stores before heading back to their California City home. Police say the missing boys were not seen in any of the video. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.